could I please invite up Team Cowboy Friends? We are Cowboy Friends. I am Finn McKinley. I go to Logan Park High School in Dunedin. Hi, I'm Michaela, and I go to Baradine College in Auckland. 안녕하세요. 저는 최근에 베들렘 고등학교를 졸업한 천재라고 합니다. Or, good evening. I'm Jay Hee Chan, a recent graduate from Bethlehem College, Tauranga. 지금 내 세동 아홉네. 안녕하세요. 알라나. 안녕하세요. 랭이토르 콜리지. Hello, everyone. I'm Alana. I go to Rangitoto College in Auckland. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Liam Dewitt Potts, and I go to Nelson College. Um, the question we'll be answering tonight has been put forth by a wonderful lecturer, Vanessa Vermeulen, which is Could you? New Zealand is said to have reached peak cow, a real time, multifaceted issue that New Zealand is currently facing. What does this mean environmentally, and how might this influence farming in New Zealand going forward? The farming and dairy industry is in the top three GDP providers for New Zealand. Like businesses, farmers aim to provide, uh, farmers aim to maximize profit. Farmers must increase the amount of produce made, such as milk, wool, or meat, and decrease the costs, such as land, water, or fertilizer. In the process of intensification, farmers need more cows and more external inputs, e.g., water and fertilizer, to produce more of the more to produce more from the same piece of land. Since the 80s, there has been a 226% increase in dairy cattle counts in New Zealand. This increase has reached a point where the environment can no longer support this increase in cattle, causing New Zealand to have reached its peak cow, meaning that the dairy industry has reached its environmental limit. This has been occurring for the last 30 years and it has had a significant impact on the environment. The environment can no longer provide enough natural resources which are essential for the cattle's health. Runoff from nitrogen and phosphorus-based synthetic fertilizers into waterways only increases this issue. This, however, is not the only source of nitrogen getting into our waterways. The major source is cow urine, containing urea, which releases nitrogen. The grass only absorbs about 20% of the nitrogen, with the other 80% leaching into the waterways. Our current farming methods are unsustainable and have adverse consequences on the natural environment. The environment is unable to sustain the current number of cows because we, ha we are depleting the resources at a faster rate than the environment can adapt. Increased agricultural intensification in New Zealand has led to a 29% increase in nitrification between 1990 and 2012. Nitrification is the process of bodies of water accumulating an excess of nutrients due to nitrogen creating an ideal environment for populations of organisms to thrive in. Brown algae, in particular, uh, explodes in water bodies, outcompeting the native fish species for oxygen in the water. This leads to the rapid decline of native freshwater species, such as galaxid and eels. Approximately 72% of native freshwater fish species are at risk of, of extinction. And if our rivers keep deteriorating at the same rate, we will have no, no, native fr na no native fish by the year 2050. The consequences of peak cow and nitrification are extreme, and past a certain point, the environment will no longer be able to cope unless we take further action. So what does peak cow mean for our agricultural industry going forward? We have used the Bozerup theory, as you can see up there on the graph, um, to forecast the future that we may be heading towards. It posits that with population growth, the threat of starvation will promote technological advancements, which in turn will promote um, intensification to continue. However, this growth will be unsustainable, and at a certain point, the system will likely collapse. So in New Zealand, it is very much evident that our agricultural practices are unsustainable, as Alana statistics have shown. So the more intensified our farms become to increase, the more degraded our soils and waterways will become. And the cycle will continue, meaning over time, our farms will progressively become less fertile and thus reliant on stronger intensification. But as the theory follows, there will eventually come a point where intensification is no longer a valid option um, to remedy our less fertile soils and highly polluted waters. This means that the consequent crop failures and limited harvest yields from livestock will no longer be able to sustain the exceedingly large global demand. Such results not only devastate the industry and our economy, but also New Zealand's um, clean green image and even the health of New Zealanders. 
Hence, it is of our stance that New Zealand must take a united and multifaceted response to prevent such a catastrophe. To reach a balance between profitability and agricultural sustainability, a parallel campaign between better farming practices and a wider education must be achieved. While many improvements to farm management could be implemented, one critical area is ensuring that the right type of land is used for the right type of farming. A positive alternative to capping cow numbers, methods such as cross-grazing or crop variants um, could be employed to reduce the size of cow herds, yet supplementing this potential lost income through other livestock or crops. This may serve to prevent soil erosion if crops are planted, while cross-grazing increases population health, allows the soil to be rested, and ultimately reduces the amount of nitrogen leaching. Furthermore, whilst not falling under the illusion that technology will inevitably save the day, farming innovation must be pursued in order to discover more sustainable methods of farming. We would thus like to present two recommendations, the first being the collection of cow urine prior to leaching. This system of urine harvesting has been proven to be both safe and humane and is already in use in other countries, including India, even though it looks a bit like a torture device. Um, this would significantly reduce the environmental effects of farming, as well as reducing the need for synthetic fertiliser, as the nitrogen could be collected and used as a natural fertiliser. Our second recommendation is that a system of rotational barn feeding be implemented, with a small percentage of each herd being housed inside a barn for short periods of time. This would allow the nitrogen to be collected into runoff ponds, again minimising leaching. However, we acknowledge the potential issues with both solutions in allowing New Zealand beef to still be considered both grass-fed and free-range, and that significant technological advancements would be needed to ensure that cow urine is viable and portable, allowing the global opinion of New Zealand beef and dairy to remain high. Education will play a massive role in mitigating the damage done by livestock farming. We need to push the concepts of enoughness and kaitiakitanga because farmers need to be content to balance profit with sustainability. We could incentivize sustainable farming by punishment with nitrogen taxes or capping cow numbers, but it would be more effective to reward good behavior and reinforce a positive mindset. For instance, more manufacturers could pay a premium for milk products that meet a set of criteria promoting sustainable farming. As for consumers, we need to be conscious of our ability to both vote with our purchases and our potential to change our diets. More vegetarian meals and meat alternatives such as impossible foods. Roughly about a third of food still goes to waste, so obviously we can cut down on that. In general, we need to reduce demand on the dry stock industry. We can also be doing more to educate future industry experts, such as agricultural science students, about the importance of sustainability. Tech advancements still need to be made, which could lead to the biggest positive change, meaning universities and governments must invest in grants and subsidies for technological advancements. So, this is our threefold solution to address the peak cow situation. Firstly, implement sustainable farming practices through positive reinforcement. Secondly, equip the consumer to make conscious decisions about their diet. And finally, empower industry experts to research technological in innovations. Thank you.